So it had COVID not happened, uh, you know, maybe that wouldn't have happened for me. Mm-hmm. So it's sil- silver lining, silver lining of a very like stressful time. I feel like made the most of it and like came out better from it. What's up? How's it going? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I'm good. Finally back from tour. So recovered. I've been back for like five days so far. So uh, feeling good, feeling good. That's good. How was the tour? Honestly, it was incredible. It was like my first time being an opener. Um, Really? Like usually I'd gone out with, I'd gone out with Hippie Sabotage boys before, but only ever like coming out during their set uh, and doing like one song. Mm -hmm. So this time it was like, all right, me by myself, 30 minute set. I am the singer, the DJ and the hype man in one. Um, So I was, I was pretty nervous, but it went super well and I I missed it already. So this is the first time you've really done a full set, like full on by yourself. Yeah. Wow. So it was, it was pretty, pretty scary just because I only had one song out at the time of going on tour um so i'm playing a 30 minute set of basically unreleased music no one's ever heard uh but everyone was like amazing that like everyone came to the show like loved it and uh it went it went great so that is so cool was that the first time you really went on a full tour too or is it usually like you'd come out Um, on a certain dates or yeah i've been on tours before but this is like the longest tour ever like our tour was 46 shows and that's like two tours in one. So it was sure. pretty, it was pretty intense. Me living on the bus with 10 guys, but um, <laughs> we got through it. We got through it and came out better the other side. So, so it was good. That is incredible. That is incredible. Well, I'm Adam, by the way, and thank you so much. Daisy, for... Yes. Nice to meet you. meet you. Sure. Yeah. I appreciate you doing this. This is all about you and your journey in music. Thank and you for having me. Yeah. We'll touch a bit more on that tour if, if you don't mind, but um. I want to start off by where were you born and raised? I was born in Birmingham, England. Okay. Uh, Birmingham. I know there's one over here too, but Birmingham over there. Okay. What was it like? How? I mean, because you live in LA now. Is that what I read? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so how old were you when you moved to LA? I was like 18, 19. Oh, okay. So you so spent was, most of your time in, in Birmingham then? Yeah, I spent my whole like childhood, like growing up in Birmingham, um, which is, it's a pretty busy place. Like it's the second biggest city in the UK. So mm-hmm. it wasn't too much of like a culture shock in that respect, moving to another big city. Uh, but it was definitely interesting having that conversation with my parents when I was like 18, being like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the other side of the world alone. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to move to America, you know, no big deal, yeah. especially in LA, like, you know, well, that's okay. I want to get to that, but okay. Tell me about, well, what was it like growing up there in Birmingham? Was it, you lived in the city or did you live in a suburb outside of the city? Like, tell me about. Yeah, I lived, I lived in a suburb outside of the city. Um, I like, yeah, like kind of a small like, little suburb. And then I went to the same school from when I was two to when I was like 18. So Kind of like only like ever like knew like one school, like had the same sort of friends growing up. Um, So they don't split you up like in an elementary school and then like more of a middle school. They they do, but my school like did it all. So it was like, you can just go there for everything. The whole Um, whole time. Sure. Pretty nice. Um, And it was cool because they had great like extracurricular stuff. Like music was massive in my school. So like on my like lunchtime breaks, I could just go. I remember being like 12. I'd go into the music block and like there'd be like three pianos that no one was using like and I'd just go in there and like spend my like half an hour lunch break just like messing around on the piano and they had like drums they had everything so that was pretty neat. Wow that is really cool that when did you get into music? I mean how old were you when I'd, you started getting I'd always, been, I'd always been into it like my dad has videos of me like singing when I'm like three like at the tv. Oh wow. Um, But yeah I'd always been into it I kind of just yeah, I don't know. I just always had like a fascination with it. Growing up, my mom would like drive me to school uh, and we'd listen to the Karen Carpenter CD like back to back. Like that was my first education in music. Uh, And I was lucky because, you know, when you reach a certain age, they're like, all right, it's time to like get the bus to school. Well, Mm -hmm. I had a little sister that went to the same school. So I was able to like keep being driven to school, which I definitely attest to my singing voice now. Because those extra years of practicing, like in the car every day, I feel like that set like the foundation for it. 
which sounds oh. silly, but I like I sang every single day, like seven days a week. So yeah, so you were just singing in the car. Was your whole family singing, or were you the one singing um, in the passenger seat? I was singing in the passenger seat. My little sister was in the back telling me to like shut up, basically. Right. <laughs> and my mom would my mom would sing as well. Um, and then my dad, same. Everyone sang, so it was very like musical family. My dad played guitar. He taught me how to play guitar when I was like eleven, um, which was great because now like that's how I write songs. Mm-hmm. That kind of helped me in the beginning before I even knew it. Were you playing piano before guitar? I mean, you mentioned piano in um, school. I was playing guitar before piano. Uh, and then like what I would do to, I don't know how to read like music, but mm-hmm. I would take the songs I knew how to play on the guitar and the chords and look at visual images of how to play those chords on the piano. And that's how I learned to play the piano, just by learning songs. And then now I can hear something and play the piano. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's kind of an unconventional way of learning it, but um, but it worked. That's amazing. Well, you said your dad taught you how to play guitar at yes. 11 years old. Was that something yeah. you're interested in, or was he like, "Hey, you should probably learn how to play guitar"? <laughs> I was I was a massive like Avril Lavigne fan growing up. When okay. I was like nine, I think my mom took me to my first concert, which was Avril Lavigne, and like she played guitar. I thought she was so cool. So my dad was like, oh, "Okay, like we had some guitars at the house." So he was like, "Let I'll like teach you." But I would get so frustrated because I would start like playing. And then as soon as I'd start singing, my hand would stop. Like to oh. try and get that hand-eye coordination. Sure. So for the first couple of months, like it was it was a struggle, but uh we got through it and then and then yeah, I just would jam out with my dad at home. <laughs> Are you still a fan of Avril or uh, Avril Levine? I am, oh. yeah. I love it. Do you it. like her new record? I do. It's definitely like, I feel like pop punk is kind of coming back now with like Machine Gun oh, Kelly. Oh yeah, totally. Everything, is. which is awesome because I feel like that, that was how she like kind of pioneered that path. Right. Um, I love it, but I feel like her OG records will always be like up there. Still your favorites. Yeah. I listened to the album. I was pretty, pretty impressed by it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I, but I, I liked about Avril Lavigne as well. You know, oh, when she's well. coming through, yeah, she still looks uh, the same as well. Like, I'm yeah. like, she does not look different at all, which I love. There's this wild conspiracy theory if you really want to get into the weeds online that she actually is not like the, the version you're seeing of her now is a fake version of her. Oh my god, like, like, yeah, a, that, like a stun double, yeah. Like, she, there's something that like she died or she's like not, and then like there's this new. <laughs> You can get real in the weeds about Wait, it. Wait, I'm going to need to, like, look this up. Yeah. What? The fake, oh, the fake one's name is Melissa. You can look what her up. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's wild. <laughs> like, there's this whole, like, behind-the-scenes, com- yeah, like, uh, conspiracy yeah, theory about Avril Lavigne. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea. I've been, I've been believing a lie. What the heck? Yeah, you don't know. It's weird. When you see the pictures and stuff, you're like, huh, that's very odd. So they do, but, like, the side-by-side of, like, her before and, like, her mm-hmm. now then. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, you should. Yeah, just Google it or look at it on YouTube. As soon as we finish, that's the first thing I'm gonna do now. You should. It's pretty interesting. Um, but anyway, so that's cool. So Avril Lavigne got you into music or made you interested in playing guitar, and then Dad taught you how to play guitar. Um, was he playing quite a bit in the house before you learned? A little bit. Um, my parents got like separated when I was 11, so for me, like music was amazing because like going through like all of that obviously like is like rough on like any kid Mm -hmm. but for me like I feel like it didn't really affect me like that much and I think whenever I was like stressed or anything like pick up you can pick up the guitar and like mindlessly play something and that's like full like calm you down and I still do that to this day like if you you're stressed about someone picking up the guitar for 15 minutes you'll always feel better afterwards I think therapeutic for you yes yes very cool So when you learn guitar, are you writing songs right away or playing, trying to learn covers? Like how did your you so know, I, journey begin? So I like would just learn covers. I would learn covers. I was in my school talent show. Um, it's funny. My first performance in music was when I was 11 with three of my friends singing no guitar, just singing, singing the YMCA at my school talent show. (laughs) I don't know who the hell let us think that was a great idea and like why my parents were like, go do that. We didn't win. However, a couple years later, I got better at the guitar. I went back and I sang a Taylor Swift song. I sang You Belong With Me and I won the whole talent show. Did you really? That's awesome. The last last year they had me back as a judge. 
so that was that was pretty neat <laughs> um like in school like everyone knew like I was the music one like I'd bring my guitar like towards the end of school when I was probably like 16 17 I'd bring my guitar in at lunchtime and like in the classroom it would be like legit high school musical vibes like I'd just be playing like four chords and I'd be like all right let's try and sing as many songs as we can over these four chords and like all my friends would be singing so that was cool. that was like there was always music around um but I started putting my covers on SoundCloud uh because I didn't have any experience really writing songs I had a couple like when I was 16 17 like a couple songs I'd written but not really writing with anyone else um but that's actually how I ended up moving over here because of like my SoundCloud that was literally songs recorded on my iPhone uploaded um and yeah do you want me to tell you that now like how I got yeah there? I want to yeah. know all of this this is so super fascinating so I was I was living in England like fast forward I'm like 17 living in England and I'm like all right I really you know I want to do this but I don't know anyone in the music industry I'm in Birmingham England I'm so far away from LA and where everything's happening mm -hmm. I'd, I'd come here on holiday like once a year like with my dad and my sister you and come was, like, to there. LA yeah yeah I'd come to LA because my dad loved LA as well he loves music and entertainment so like we just come over here just on holiday and just like oh. come for a couple days um but it was always mm -hmm. really bittersweet because you know I'm coming to this place surrounded by everything I want to be doing in music and entertainment and then I would just leave again and go back home back to school and I'd be like oh like I'd be like so gutted there was something about just being here that made me feel like really just like happy and inspired I think it was just being around like that energy of people creating mm -hmm. um so fast forward to when I was probably yeah 17 we came back here on holiday we're at the Beverly Hills Hotel and I thought, you know what, I have to try something different this time. Like, I'm at this hotel, there's got to be someone here that does music. Or like, you know, it's a famous hotel, like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I want to try something. So I went on Instagram, and there's a feature, which was at the time, you could look and see who else is taking pictures in your location, just mm -hmm. by searching like the geotag. So I looked and I saw that this guy had just posted a picture like, two or three hours prior, clicked on his page, said he was a talent manager. And I was like, okay, maybe if I follow this guy and like a couple of his pictures, he'll go to my Instagram where there was a link to my SoundCloud. And my plan oh. worked. He followed me back like within the hour, asked to get coffee, I brought my dad with me. My dad was like, what the hell? Like some random man wants to come meet. Like, I was like, just yeah. come with me. And then he is the one who ended up getting me signed to my first publishing deal. And really? a, year, a year later, I moved to LA. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. insane. Which was insane. It like gives me like goosebumps still because I'm like, if I'd have gone on a different day or just like looked at a different time, I never would have seen that picture. I never would have, you know, maybe never would have made that connection. And then would I be living here now? Right. I mean, what if you wouldn't even thought to do that? Right. I mean, yeah. to, to look on the geotag and see who else is posting pictures. That is, that's a brilliant idea. I've done a million of these or over a thousand of these interviews and I've never heard that one before. Oh, cool. So, yeah, yeah well, that's a good one. That's, that's was, really good. It was honestly pure frustration of just being like, okay, I have to try something. And I was like, I'm just going to try this. And yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm thank God it worked. <laughs> so he, this manager went to your SoundCloud and then what? Went to comes, my SoundCloud. Uh, follows you and says, he hey. Had, yeah, like, hey, like uh, he actually wasn't, he was my first manager. We don't work together anymore, but um, he was like actually English, had lived in LA for like 20 years and was like, hey, like would love to meet you. I've listened to your SoundCloud, I like your voice. I think I could, you know, like help. So I met up with him with my dad. And then like two months later, he was back in England. I went to a Starbucks and met him. And I like had one of my friends like at the Starbucks too, like in disguise, like just in case, you know. And I was like <laughs> smart. It's super you young. Can't, so can't I was like, careful. I don't, you know. So right. my friend was there and I was like texting her, like, well, I'm like having the meeting. And he was like, Look, come to LA for three months. I want to introduce you to some people and like, you know, do a couple sessions and like we'll just see how it goes. So I did. I, I came to LA for three months, stayed on an air mattress when I was 18, like at this like guy's house. Uh, who ended who was my manager at that point uh -huh. and he introduced me uh to a couple of people who offered me a publishing deal at the end of the three months and then they're like all right you know do you if you want to do this you, you have to like move here and they sponsored my visa and then I whoa moved. yeah 
Wow. And so you must have had original songs up on SoundCloud at this time too, or no? Uh, or I I had, okay, so I had a couple original songs and the guy I was introduced to was a guy called Anthony Saylor, who is like SVP of Innescope. And he was like, look, I really like, your voice I you know I, I went to his house with my manager and I sang like five covers on the guitar and like one original song he was like I want to see what you can do if you're actually with a producer mm -hmm. so he set me up with a producer called Daniel Heath who did all the Lana Del Rey stuff for Gatsby and stuff for her first record and I'm terrified because I'd never written a song with anyone else let alone someone that has written with Lana Del Rey yeah, so, yeah. Or even uh, terrified, I bet, going to this guy's house to play for him. He's, uh, yeah, you know, the yeah. senior vice president like, for Interscope. And he's like, all right, here's a guitar. Show me what you can do. Literally. And he, <laughs> I saw, he came to my show at the Wilton five days ago, and we were talking about that moment. And he still has the footage from the GoPro. So we're, wow. we're going to have to, like, put that together somehow. That's insane. And you played the Wilton? That's huge. Yeah, no, that I was, mean, wow, that, okay. That was That's incredible. Amazing. But, um, yeah, so, like, what were they saying? Oh yeah, so go to go to the session, Lana mm -hmm. producer, and they're like, if you do well, we'll offer you a publishing deal. So no pressure. So I'm oh, thinking, oh wow, oh my god, all right, well, I have to, I can't mess this up. I go to the guy's house, we work together, and we write a song in four hours, and it's great, and they love it, and they offer me the deal. Wow. And, and then the rest is like history from that. So you just stayed in LA after that. Stayed in LA, started doing, you know, I did like hundreds of sessions, wrote a thousand songs that no one's going to hear, but just, you know, went through the, went through the rounds to earn mm -hmm. my like stripes of like a songwriter. Um, right. And I'd always wanted to be, you know, I came across like wanting to be an artist, but everyone just kind of saw me as a songwriter, um, which was kind of annoying, but I was like, all right, like I'll just, you know, I'll do sessions. I'll do, you know, what everyone wants me to do doing all these sessions for years and years. And then four years ago, a DJ called Tommy Trash, he received a folder of 200 demos, like from different singers, different producers. And he told me afterwards, he said, you know, he went through all of them. He only liked two of the songs, which like were mine. And he was like, find out who the hell Daisy is. And then invited me to his house. We worked on a bunch of music and he is the one who first wanted me on a record as an artist, not as a songwriter writing for someone else. He was like, I can't find anyone's voice that I like more than, than yours. So can you be on the song? And then that was the first official release I had. Well, how was that like? That was amazing. Cause like, that's what I wanted for like the longest time. So for someone to ask me that I was like, absolutely. And then mm -hmm. that kind of helped open everyone else's eyes around me to see oh okay like you, we can see you as the artist as well now mm -hmm. which is always kind of annoying it's like why does it take you know why can't you see it before it happens but sometimes people have to like see it before they can jump on board with it sure and what was it like working then with Tommy Trash was their song written or did you have to write the whole top line for it or how um, did that work there was one song written that I'd written with uh, one of my like writing partners that I'd kind of developed with at that point, Patrick Hartman. Um, yeah, it was just a demo over like a looped beat. And that went on to be the song Sinners that I put out with Tommy and went to the studio and kind of he produced it up and, you know, he was asking me for my opinion, which was really cool because prior to that, I'd literally just been like fly on the wall songwriter, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then since then we went on to like have a bunch more songs together. We have like three or four songs together. And he was a great mentor and friend just like in like helping me to believe in myself. Mm -hmm. And then you ended up recently enough reaching or uh, re releasing the songs of your own, right? So then you yes. go from now you're releasing songs with, you know, different artists to now you put out a song of your own. I Found You was the first one you did? Yes, I Found You is uh, the first song. And that was definitely like a long time coming because fast forward to, you know, after all the Tommy Trash stuff, I was now writing songs for myself, but trying to mm -hmm. figure out what is my sound. Like I'd been on loads of DJ featured songs where, it, which is amazing, but they already have their sound and I'm kind of fitting into their box. So I was right. like, what does, what do my records sound like? And that was honestly a three year period of trial and error of writing different genres. It like, took like a ton of time, um, but yeah, it was cause... really, Oh, sorry. I, mean, I was just going to say, cause you're, yeah, like you said, you're, you've, been an artist on these other people's songs but their sound is their sound like yeah. you know tommy trash is his own they're their own sound and then you're just 
adding to it right and then now you're like okay what is what does daisy sound like what what is my record going to to sound like exactly and at the same time like i was uh you know going on tour with hippie sabotage which i can yeah i can tell you kind of how that came about yeah well. let's hear it um so that was cool so we have the same kind of management network um and they were like my manager ryan rodriguez he was like oh like you should go over to the hippies house and just meet them and just, you know like see if you guys get on so i was like oh okay I just learned to drive the week before because living in England, like I didn't drive. So here I, I took three driving lessons. I passed my test and there, and then I was on my way in my car. Like, here's the keys. I was like, why is this so easy? The first time I drove on the freeway was driving to their house. So I'm terrified. Oh, wow. Like I'm literally terrified, but I was like, I have to go to their house. So like. Not only that, you're, you're on the other side of the road, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. So it was a whole host of things made it there safely but there's a funny story about this i'll tell you made it there safely we got on uh super well like we ended up writing uh a song called chasing the wild which they went on to then release and they were like hey like we're going on tour in three weeks do you want to come on tour with us and just sing that one song during our set they literally were like we're going in like two weeks do you want to come i was like okay um so they're like, okay, can you come back here tomorrow? And we're going to take some pictures for the cover art and we'll put the song on SoundCloud. And then two weeks later, like you can come out and do it. Fast forward to the next day, they lived in this area called Silver Lake, which is yeah. very hilly. Um, mm -hmm. I just learned how to drive. Yeah, I'm, I'm from ride. Southern, I'm from San Diego. I, I oh, know okay, Silver so Lake. You know. But yeah, but for people that don't understand, yeah, very hilly. Very hilly. <laughs> so I pull up to the house, all excited to take these pictures and I crash into that car. Oh man! I crash into their parked car. So <laughs> you can imagine, you can imagine the panic. I'm sitting in my my car, which was like brand new, which I was also stressed out about. I was like, oh my god, I've like damaged my car. I've damaged their car, and now I'm sitting outside their house for 20 <laughs> minutes in my car, like freaking out, crying. Like, what am I going to tell them? I've ruined right. everything. They're going to hate me. No more tour. How am I going to tell my manager? Like I've crashed that, you know, <laughs> I eventually make it in the house and I say, guys, I don't know how to tell you this, but I've crashed into your car and they just start laughing. And I'm <laughs> like, why are you guys laughing? They're like, Oh, that car hasn't moved for two years. We don't, it doesn't even work anymore. We don't care. And I'm like, <laughs> I was um, gonna ask if you if you started the conversation with that or you did the pictures and you're like, hey guys. I no, I literally so. went, I can't <laughs> lie. So I just went in and was like, look, I've crashed into your parked car. Like I, I'm sorry. So they didn't care, which was amazing. And we actually wrote a song about it called Crash in that day. So it was like that's awesome. Funny story. Um <laughs> but so then like since since that moment, we've been best friends. Like I run a lot and like one of the brothers, Jeff, he comes running with me all the time. And since then I've gone on tour with him, like kind of every year, always kind of just coming out, doing one song during their set, mm -hmm. um, which was also bittersweet because, you know, I'd see they would have an opener every time and I'd be like, kind of jealous, like, Oh, like I, I want to, yeah, I want to open. <laughs> but I didn't have, you know, I just had a couple of DJ songs I'd done and I had like 200 songs that kind of sounded all over the place that, you know, not a solid body of work. Mm -hmm. so fast forward to 2019 we're on tour we're a week into tour we just have got to new orleans and we find out our entire tour is cancelled because of covid and we're all like you know stressed freaking out come home but that ended up being a massive blessing in disguise because in that like year and a half i sat down with my producer and we made a bubble we worked together every day and we finally created like a body of work like 20 25 songs that were the best we'd ever done and super proud of and actually had discovered my sound. Um, and that ended up being like, you know, I found you was the single from that, from that mm -hmm. project that we like had made. Uh, and then hippies were like, come around to like, you know, this year they're like, Hey, like now you have a body of work. We want you to be the opener. So it had COVID not happened, uh, you know, maybe that wouldn't have happened for me. Mm -hmm. So it's sil silver lining, silver lining of a very like stressful time. I feel like made the most of it and like came out better from it. Wow. Was there a, like when you were, were trying to kind of discover your sound, you must have had like an idea what you wanted to sound like. I'm sure it wasn't like, all right, we're going to go with a country song and we're <laughs> going to throw out like a hip hop song. 
like like when it came to how long did it take you to really find what sound you were looking for i think well for me like i want to make music that i like so i was like okay wait what artists do i like i love ellie Golding, i love halsey i love the week i love halsey too yeah and like, i love everybody that you mentioned taylor stuff i'm like oh man like <laughs> these are like the people yeah. I'm, I'm a little obsessed with literally, literally so i was like okay i want to sound like if if you mesh ellie Golding, halsey with the weekend like mm -hmm. what does that sound like dark pop i have a pretty like kind of soft sweet tone to my voice what does it sound like if someone with that sort of tone is singing about the things that Weekend is singing about? And you kind of have to like, you hear it and you're like, oh, that's sweet. And then you like actually listen. And you're like, wait, what did she just say? That, right. I kind of want to do that like low-key shock factor. Um, so I was like, okay, like to my producer, I was like, this is what I want it to be. And then we kind of, you know, what's done already and out there is already kind of old. So we're like, how can we like do that? But put like our own like tilt on it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how we got to I Found You. That was like the first one, started it on the guitar and then he built it up and then that evolved into then having the song Skin. Mm -hmm. And then we have all the others ready to go. Yeah, Skin was the most recent one that you've put out, correct? Skin, yeah, Skin is the most recent song um, mm -hmm. featuring Marky Basie, which was awesome because I've been a fan of him for a long time. And like when I was like first here, like driving around with my friends, I'd be like, oh, like, we turn on Marky Basie. I'd be like, I want to have a song with him one day. And then he worked with my producer, TK Kionbe, and he heard a couple of my songs and he was like, oh, do you think she'd want to do a song with me? And like, asked wow. my producer. So I'm like, yeah, I was like, that That was a pretty weird, like full circle moment. That's incredible. And then, so you have more, obviously more songs. And is there going to be like... I like you have a record coming out, I'd imagine, of some sort yes. of body of work. So the next record I have coming out is in April, April 15th. And it is actually like a cover. It's actually a Lady Gaga cover of her song, You and I. Because um, she did recently, she did a 10th anniversary rework of the album. And she wanted mm -hmm. to feature LGBT artists on the record because it was heavily inspired by that community. Uh -huh. So she, like her team reached out to like my team and we're like, hey, like would Daisy want to do a song for this? And uh, ended up not being on the actual like album just because I think they kept it like major artists only, which fair enough. But mm -hmm. they want me to do one and they're going to like give it support on her playlist and be like the Spotify exclusive version of it. Wow. Which was really cool because I actually, I got to work with her guitarist who did like the original song with her. And like he was, he reworked it kind of like for my voice and was like, all right, if this song came out today, what would it sound like? So it's a bit more like it's got some more like elements of like kind of the weekend in it in the production, which is like sick. So that is coming out in April. That's exciting. Wow. So did you, she, her, her team reached out to yours when it came to like, we're doing this thing. Yes. Would, would Daisy be interested in singing a song? And then did you get to choose the song? Yeah, so I looked through the whole thing and yeah, I was like, they let me choose. So I was like, you and I, like like that. I love that song. And I thought it would be cool to to do that and like kind of reimagine what that would sound like like today. Cause it kind of is like a it kind of had a has a country element to it, like in the mm -hmm. song. Um, so I'm like, all right, let's kind of take that out and like make it more like kind of like a dark pop song. What was it like working then with her producer? Was that like was a, oh incredible. my gosh, moment it was, or no? Yeah, it was, it was her producer and her guitarist, Tim. Uh -huh. um, and it was incredible. Yeah, going to the house, like I was so nervous at first. I was like, oh my God, like, okay, like another thing, like don't mess it up, don't mess it up. Like it's got to go good. <laughs> yeah, I can't um, crash into their car. Yeah, don't crash into their <laughs> car, you know. Um, and it went really well. And we ended up like afterwards, like I would hang out with them, you know, I still do like every couple of weeks we do a session and just write and tim actually for the last show in la he came out and played guitar with me on one of my last songs during my set which was a pinch that was incredible like incredible wow um, so it was really cool and like now like we're just friends which is like awesome and yeah like i think just creatively to like be friends with people like that it's great just to bounce ideas off them and yeah it's just it's pretty cool that is really cool how does your uh, dad feel about all this 
that's happening yeah, with you. Like, he must like, be so stoked. Yeah, I feel like he's super, super stoked. He always like plays it cool, but then I like hear him or hear stories about how he's like gloating to his friends or like telling his friends about it. And I'm like, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> but like, cause it like, to me, he's always very like serious and like, uh-huh. you know, business vibes and then, and then i can tell like he's stoked my whole family's like stoked i that's face awesome. my grandma all the time and i like tell her about it and uh yeah they're all like they're all happy and they're all in birmingham still yes okay yeah i mean to have your dad be so fascinated by los angeles enough to take you all there for you yeah. know a holiday and everything and then you're here and you're working with these people i mean lady gaga is the one of the biggest names in the in the world so yeah. him just say like oh my you know my daughter's working with lady gaga's guitar player for yeah. a song and like that's so huge no it that's- was really 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 cool my, my dad actually flew out to my show in new york which was awesome because he'd never seen you know it and to to describe it but then to see it uh he was having a blast he was like dancing with all my friends and like he was loving it so did, oh, that's cool did, did you like like tell me about him being at the show then he came oh, well, out did you like so fly he, him in or he no he like he was like i'm coming he like flew himself he came there a couple of days before and like was just hanging out in new york we okay. wanted to and then like at sound check he was being really annoying like i was like <laughs> everything was getting set up and i like went to the back to get something i come back he's on the stage like with the microphone like with like singing <laughs> like, what is going on um, what was he singing? I don't even know what he was singing. I think he was singing Bachelor Boy, like a really old song. I don't know. Because <laughs> he used to sing in talent shows too. And like, he would always sing that song. Okay. Um, but he was loving it. And then like, we all took a pre-show, like shot of tequila together. And then during um, during my set, he was standing like in between the pit and the stage, like here, mm-hmm. with like some of my friends. And like, I had to stop going to that side of the stage. So I was, cr- I just kept like cracking up because they were all like going crazy. And I was like, can't focus. I can't focus. <laughs> but they had, they had a blast, had a blast. That's amazing. That is awesome. So the next song coming out, like you said, it's a, is a cover. Is that going to make your project or is it going to uh, just be rolled out as more singles after the fact? Yeah, I think it's going to be just kind of rolled out as like a single, uh, mm-hmm. just, you know, something for people to, like kind of different from the music I put out already just right. maybe for someone else's palette it would suit it um and just awesome to to cover a song and like get the okay to do that from such like a, an amazing artist like Gaga is like incredible oh, yeah I mean for her to green light the situation and be like yeah like we want we want this song like that's yeah. crazy yeah and I know she's like heard it and like likes it and stuff so like that was that was <laughs> crazy um and then after that then we're gonna put out my project which is called the highs which Mm -hmm. is gonna have i found you on it skin and three brand new songs that i have been performing on tour but no one's actually been able to properly hear yet okay and there's there's some like themes behind the the record as well yeah so kind of the highs is kind of just the first two songs are about like being like young being in a new place you know, like falling in love and kind of being reckless and always say like making like bad decisions with like good memories because I think mm-hmm. when I came here like so young by myself like I definitely did that um, oh, yeah and also just about like the highs of being in terms of like the highs and the lows the highs of being in a new place and like a new how, country right yeah, a new I mean... country a new culture not I knew two people when I moved here I knew my manager and the people that offered me a publishing deal that was it I didn't have any I didn't have any friend my only friend was my manager at the time who was like 55 that was my only friend I didn't know anyone um so yeah but the, the highs of just being in a new place but also like the nice not naivety but like just kind of not overthinking it because I think had I overthought anything maybe I would have talked myself out of doing any of it you know, it was kind mm-hmm. of more just like following that passion and gut instinct and just like letting that be the driving force. And, you know, odds are I shouldn't have made it. Odds are I shouldn't be living here right now. But like odds are odds and living life is living life. So mm-hmm. it's Amazing. About, about that. Amazing. Well, 
I love what you're doing so far. I can't wait to hear this Lady Gaga cover. And congratulations on the tour. That's huge. Thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. This is a great chat. Like, it's cool, like, talking through it from start to now. Like, I have a smile on my face because I'm like, wow, like, I still, like, I'm so stoked that I'm doing what I'm doing right now. That's so awesome. I have one more quick question. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Yeah, okay. I think especially in today's, like, climate of like fast music, like, you know, qu like quantity over quality. I think don't just kind of cater to, to that culture of it because you should, you know, make music you're proud of, make music you like, but make it on your own timeline. There's a bunch of people that were, you know, were saying to me, oh, like you're going on tour, like, but you only have two songs I like that's kind of weird. Like you should have all your music out. And I'm just like, I don't want to, rush based around like anyone else's timeline I kind of want to put it out like when when I want to put it out and kind of I think just like taking advice but also trusting yourself I think that and don't just you know let everyone else take it because you don't want to look back and and think oh like you didn't live your own truth or your own dream Bring me the best world.